Welcome to another episode of Disruptive Dental Science. I'm Dr. Matthew Miller, Clinical Ambassador for the Dental Advisor. Today, we're going to be talking about some new innovative ways to do restorative fillings with a bulk fill technique that is self-curing, therefore it offers an unlimited depth of cure and promises an intact margin with a gap-free interface. The mechanical properties are excellent and so are the aesthetics. It's easy to use and offers kind of a new technique and on something that we've traditionally not thought about or done differently in the past. Hey, Matt, thanks for having me here and glad to be part of the Dental Advisor team as always and, and, uh, and talk about today's uh, 2024 Research Award winner, SDI Stella. So uh, I did, I was one of the clinical evaluators and I, it's, you're right, it's a very intri intriguing product that we don't often see come to market. Um, like you mentioned, that self-care technology allows for that unlimited depth of cure. Um, let's talk about kind of what you found in the lab. Like what, what did, uh, how did this hold up? Yeah, so we, we did a large battery of tests uh, looking at everything from the kind of the strength properties, the ability to cure. Uh, we did an evaluation of bonding in com combination with the primer, as well as uh, we did SEM images of the interfaces looking to see uh, how it you know worked in kind of one of the most challenging uh, situations of a class one restoration that has, you know, full walls and a very large restoration that for light cured composites is very difficult for it to cure completely and not leave any gaps anywhere. Um, and Stella did great at this because it's really the main advantage of Stella is it's the combination of the self-curing properties, which allows the polymerization stresses to spread out throughout the entire restoration rather than being directed in one direction from light curing, as well as the fact that the primer works together with it to contact cure at the margins so that it starts curing at the margins before everything else. So it helps to provide, you know, kind of seamless uh, margins around the entire preparation. So, yeah, so that sounds pretty impressive. You touched on a couple of things, but um, that I want to kind of uh, talk about a little bit, take a deeper dive. You know, you mentioned um, like class ones. We talk about shrinkage stress. We talk about C factor. This goes back to dental school. And class ones, although they're easy to do, they can be the, some of the most technique sensitivity or technique sensitive procedures because, and same with class twos, because of the risk for gaps at the margin, post up sensitivity. So, uh, you know, this material with that primer being the initiator, it actually uh, uh, it actually uh, cures the composite towards the tooth. Whereas with a light curing light, you're going to kind of have that uh, resin cure towards the light. So in essence, we're reducing that shrinkage stress. We're eliminating pulling away from the tooth. Um, so ultimately, as a clinical dentist, that means we get what? Less recurrent decay, less leakage, less sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it, exactly. And uh, the pri primer contains MDP. It did very well in the bond strength tests, uh, survived thermocycling without a problem, uh, had very high bond strengths uh, on par with any of the top adhesives on the market. So as, as a combination, it's a very impressive system. That's huge because we don't usually think of something that's kind of self-curing or that that we just use a primer for a couple of seconds. What we, we, what we apply for five seconds, air dry for two or three, and that's it. We're good to go. Um, we usually kind of equate those to glass anomer or resin modified glass anomer, which don't usually have as high of a bond strength or as high of wear resistance and, and other compressive properties. But it sounds like from your research, it, this actually is equivalent or better than most resin composites and resin adhesives on the market. Yeah, for as far as, you know, comparing to other resin composites from the strength perspective, it's, you know, at probably at the 75 plus percentile in terms of strength, in terms of bond strength, um, it, it's, you know, very, very well matched for, you know, what, what it is, you know, for the auto mix syringe, uh, you know, has kind of the filler loading that you'd expect from kind of a full, full bulk composite, which, you know, the, the, which has a subsequent lower 
modulus, which means it's kind of more flexible. It's a very good dent and replace vent. And the you know capsule uh, mixture has a higher filler loading and it's, it has one of the highest modulus of composites on the market. So really good as a capping layer. It's gonna be more wear resistant. Um, yeah, and the, yeah, and just to mention about the primer, um, you know, compared to light cured composites or, or adhesives where you might need to scrub for 20 seconds on the dentin, you know, take three to four seconds to air dry, and then you have to light cure. This is a to totally, you know, light free restoration system. It, so it is just, you know, apply for five seconds, if, if you know, just really enough to cover the re the area, the prep and then you know air dry and it's relatively thin so you don't even have to air dry mm -hmm. as much as uh, some other composite adhesives yeah it's it's a really simple system um because it's self care i would urge clinicians to have proper isolation during that time but um you know i, I felt like it really matched the tooth well. We had, we had good color blendability like i wouldn't use this necessarily in the anterior and sdi doesn't really indicate it so much for that. I mean, I, I suppose you could, but, um, it's kind of that a two, a three shade, but it blends really well because we're not having to worry about having too much translucency, uh, with having needing curing light penetration. And I was really impressed with the, how, how natural it looked and how polishable, like how, how, um, how well the surface polished mm -hmm. a lot of these kinds of, uh, whether it's bulk fills, whatever category you want to put it in, they kind of have, I don't know, like almost like a matte finish sometimes. Um, this was really, uh, is, so is that related to just the particle shape and size or how do they, how do they get that element? Yeah. You know, I, I couldn't say exactly, you know, why it, it polishes so well. It is to some degree, it's something to do with how well the resin matrix is integrated. It's a very, you know, dense resin matrix mm -hmm. um, because the fillers don't appear to be, you know, anything particularly, you know, lending to the the polishability. But it does have a very high gloss when it cures and it polishes mm -hmm. well. Um, and to just to go back to the the aesthetics, the fact that um, you don't need light to penetrate it, that it's allowed to be more opaque than uh, other bulk filled composites means it can look, you know, in, in, especially in posteriors, I think more, you know, l look a little better in, in large yeah. fillings than those do. Um, as well as it, it actually works a little better to block discoloration uh, mm -hmm. under the surface. Uh, we we did a also a, a unrelated uh, test with it, an SDF and uh, using the Stella on top of it actually worked better than other bulk filled composites for kind of masking the color and blending in. Yeah, yeah you're right, and you know it sounds like it's. Got, I mean, as we're talking about its you know, properties and, and and characteristics, you know, can see why it became the. Uh, you know, 2024 research award recipient. Um, what was it in particular that stood out to you guys in the lab when you're testing it that really kind of gave it this designation? Well, it, it's really a combination of it being such a unique product and really being above average to excellent in every property that we tested, you know, from the radio opacity, the strength, the uh, bonding uh, system, um, the the consistent depth of cure that we've got um, really really you know it couldn't have done any better in our lab testing. How how did you find uh, the handling the capsule in particular? Uh, we did do a test on kind of trying to look at the stickiness of the capsule because you know being a soft curing you know product and you need to, needing to you know manipulate it in place, which isn't really as possible with the all the the auto mix flowable. You can mm -hmm. kind of push it to margins as needed, yeah. but you know the capsule I'm assuming is going to be used for a lot of capping you know layers if you're ever going to be shaping it. Uh, in our in our test for the stickiness, it actually seemed less sticky than many composites that we tested previously. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. That's that's definitely true. It really handles like a natural composite, almost kind of like a warmed composite consistency. Mm -hmm. um, it's you would typically expect something that you have to triturate that comes in a capsule to be kind of sticky or tacky, and this wasn't. I mean, it handles mm -hmm. literally like I felt like. Um, 
like warmed composite. That's the best way I could describe it. You can condense it, you can spread it, you can sculpt it. Whereas the, the, the auto mix flowable is pretty much like that. What you'd expect It's kind of handles more like a flowable. You're going to kind of spread it a little bit, but you kind of want to leave it untouched. Um, uh, you know, not fiddle with it too much. It's yeah, it's really just kind of impressive how they nailed the matching of the two for it for a whole system because the fracture toughness of both is actually almost identical and kind of on the high end of composites as well, as well as the radio opacity is almost identical for both. So uh, you know, the kind of de attention to detail they had in making the system is it's pretty impressive. It is. And, you know, when we talk about a four minute set time, if you were doing a layering technique, you're going to spend more than four minutes on a large restoration. If you're doing a bulk fill technique, you're still going to spend a couple of minutes by the time you're uh, etching and priming and bonding and then putting in your composite and all the time you're going to light cure depending on your curing light and the different angles. So this, this really doesn't add much time to the the working time or your or your workflow yeah i mean i have to imagine for kind of large fillings this is probably one of the fastest systems that you can mm -hmm. apply for a large filling if you don't have to do incremental fill um you know if you and without kind of the concern if you do a large bulk filling and bulk carrying that you know you can have you know gap formation mm -hmm. yeah and and you know, for me, the cases I used it, I, I literally no issues or sensitivity. Uh, the radio opacity is really good. So when you think about using this in a deep margin elevation or a deep situation, those things are really important. I mean, I love high, highly radio opaque products personally, regardless of the depth, just so we know and when it can identify what is uh, restorative material versus tooth structure. Um, mm. How did, so if you had to put a value on that radio opacity, what does it kind of fall under? Is it about you know, above 200, but around 300 lumens maybe? It, it was about 280. So that is, uh, so Denton is about 100. Enamel is about 200%. This is in terms of equivalence to aluminum because the aluminum, mm -hmm. particular alloy aluminum that's used for these tests uh, is almost perfectly matched to Denton. And enamel is almost, you know, exactly twice as radio opaque as Denton. So that this is why we use this as the uh, comparison. So it, it's, yeah, almost 50% more uh, radio opaque than enamel. So it allows, you know, a good distinguish, uh, able to distinguish it from the two structure. Yeah. It's really what we target is between 250 to 300 mm -hmm. is what we kind of consider the ideal radio opacity. Uh, yeah. Because if you go if you go over 400, there starts mm -hmm. to be effects where uh, the software for the the X ray machine, uh, digital X rays at least, um, start to have an effect where it looks like there's gaps when there aren't. Yeah, yeah, um, it's, so, it's almost like a scatter type of effect yeah. where yeah, yeah, yeah. So it really is kind of in the ideal range. Nice. Um, you know, sometimes I'll get asked this by patients. You know, what's in it? Right. And we can talk about, well, it's releasing fluoride, calcium, strontium, and it's got this minute resin matrix and stuff, but it's important to know that it's also, uh, uh, it doesn't have any BPA. So it's free of BPA and it does not have any HEMA, which is in a lot of universal bonding agents. You know, that's, it's, you know, so that's being that we're not light curing, we're not, uh, we're using this self care. It's important to note those things because we're, uh, less likely to get a lot of discoloration long-term or have any sort of like issues with the BPA. Yeah, I'm I'm interested to see uh, how the color stability tests turn out in the future. As this is more research, that it may be, it, it, you know, maybe I'm speaking out of turn and they've already it's already been tested somewhere, but I, I don't think I've seen it. But uh, because it doesn't have seek uh, the photo initiators, it doesn't have some of these other elements that mm -hmm. tend to uh, exacerbate you know color change. And CQ is, you know, more yellow in itself. So they didn't have to balance for that. Um, I, I, I'm curious to see how this color matches in the long term. We did a um, kind of, a, you know, several month uh, test that was unrelated and it had, you know, near identical, you know, color after that. So I'd be curious to see how like a very long term, you know, color stability test would compare to others. But it's interesting that we're talking about this because this isn't really a highly meant to be a highly aesthetic composite. Right. 
it's really meant, you know, originally they thought of it as an amalgam replacement, but really, you know, it should be a really good core buildup, you know, all yeah, you know, posterior bulk composite. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. You're right. I feel like they they kind of undersold it, you know, as like just an amalgam substitute. And it's like, yeah, it kind of is, because if you especially if you're doing the the you know, the capsule, the mixing capsule and, and you're letting something self cure. And so in that thought and that line of thinking, yeah, it is kind of an amalgam replacement, but it's so much more. It's a really cool, smart product. That's very easy to use. It's, it's really pretty impressive. I'm just, as I think about it, I, I still get kind of like, is this real? Is this possible? Is this real where we only have to apply a primer for five seconds, you know, air dry for a couple and then, and then put, put the material in and we're getting significantly high bond strings at no compromise, no sacrifice. It's, I don't know. It really, it, it changed. It's, it's not just an amalgam substitute. It's a pretty cool thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, this is probably just the start for uh, this product line. I'm sure they're going to innovate yeah. even more. I, I don't know what they're going to do, but I, I feel like they're probably not done, but you know, really all this together, uh, it's really just, I think, is a easy way to explain why I won our dental advisor research award yeah. for the last year. Yeah, well, great job on on the studying this material, the imaging that you guys did, and, and the analysis on it. So, and um, you know, I was happy to be part of the evaluation process, but the the research you guys put in was pretty impressive and top notch at, at the dental advisor. Oh, thank you. Um, it it is a breath of fresh air to talk about good products and uh, really no problem at all.